This is part three of Introductory Basic Nutrition. In part one, we asked the question, why do we care about nutrition and what are its basic elements? In part two, we discussed protein, that protein foods are things that move or produce uh, either the contractile tissue itself or products from things that move or soy and that carbohydrate foods are mainly things that do not move, plants. So plants have different parts to them with different amounts of digestible carbohydrate. Broccoli has almost as much sugar in it as uh, a piece of cake, but that sugar is bound up as cellulose or fiber, and so we poop it out and it doesn't matter that it has a lot of sugar in it. it. body doesn't see it as sugar. It sees it as a scrubbing agent to help clean you out and uh, the fiber holds on to a lot of phytonutrients so you end up with a lot more uh, micronutrients, vitamins and minerals and, phyto and phytos, antioxidants. Because of eating the fiber that you're not digesting, so the uh, what we think of as vegetables uh, have a ton of sugar in them, but most of that sugar we cannot digest, isn't, isn't received into the bloodstream. So vegetables are uh, relatively low in digestible carbohydrate and therefore not sweet, but the digestible calories in vegetables are identical to the digestible calories in fruit and in sweets like candy. It's table sugar, cane sugar, same, uh, very similar to the sugars in honey or maple syrup. Uh, agave is a little bit higher in fructose than those other uh, foods that I just mentioned, if you want to think of them as foods. So whether it's a vegetable, where most of the sugar is bound up as fiber, or a fruit that has the same kind of digestible calories as vegetables, but a lot more of them, because those are the parts of the plant that the plant wants to be eaten. Because when an, when, uh, an organism eats uh, the fruit, then the seed gets spat out or pooped out somewhere else. So it's a transport mechanism for the plant to uh, increase its reach in its environment. But the leaves and the stalks and the roots, the plant's not looking for those things to be eaten. So it doesn't put a lot of uh, broken down uh, disaccharides that are perceived as sweet by organisms like us. You know, so instead there's a lot more phytonutrients, these bitter compounds that kill off viruses, bacteria, and as well as the lining of the intestine of insects. So the in insects will poop out their intestine and then they die off so the plant has protected itself. It's phytonutrients, you could think of in some sense like an external immune system to protect the plant from the environment so that it can keep growing the fruit and lower um, load sugars into that fruit so that uh, animals will will come and zero in on that to transport the seeds around. Then there are some storage parts of uh, plants that are high in glucose, uh, usually long glucose chains which are not detected as sweet even though the glucose is sugar and those parts of plants we refer to as starches. So there's three types of starches. Tubers, like yams, potatoes, sweet potatoes. Uh, cereals, which are harvestable grasses, like rice, corn, and grains, like oats and wheat, which then makes pasta and bread. And then instead of seeds on a grass, there are seeds that are in pods, uh, lentils and starchy beans. Now, peanuts are a legume, but they're mainly unsaturated fats. Soybeans are a legume, but they're mainly unsaturated fat and protein. So I'm thinking here of the, the starchy type bean that has kind of a consistency of, of a potato when you, when you bake it or, or cook the beans. Those are higher in glucose, like potatoes, like tubers, and like cereals. But legumes, the starchy legumes, have a different molecular assembly 
of the glucose so that it resists digestion, which is why legumes produce so much gas, because a fourth to a third of those sugars uh, get to the end of the small intestine and, and even into the large intestine before they are digested by bacteria in our intestines, and the bacteria produce gas as a, as a side product. So gas is a direct physiological indicator of having eaten a slow digesting carbohydrate, which is fantastic for, um, for personal health, not so much social health, but uh, since the carbohydrate digests slower, it uh, comes into the bloodstream slower and your lean tissues have more time to absorb uh, those carbohydrate calories. Whereas uh, the cereals like rice and potatoes and the tubers, uh, they will digest faster. So even if you're under eating in a meal, half the carbohydrates may end up spilling over into fats because their digestion rate is so high. So separate out in your mind with regard to starches, the legumes, the lentils and the beans from the tubers and the cereals, the harvestable grasses. And think of the legumes as being a slower digesting and the tubers and the cereals as being a faster digesting starch source, which are primarily, in all cases, glucose, which is a direct fuel source for your brain, muscles, and all of the other uh, tissues in your body. This is as opposed to vegetables, fruits, and sweets, like cake or table sugar. Those digestible calories are sucrose. Sucrose is half glucose, like in the starches, and the other half is fructose. Fructose has to be converted into glucose before it can be used by the body as a fuel source. It's used directly as fuel in small amounts, but mainly it's converted into glucose, and the liver does that. So when you drink orange juice or have a piece of cake, eat a banana, or have a bunch of tomatoes or carrots, these things, while not as high in calories as some of the starches, they will have glucose and fructose entering the bloodstream, and your lean tissues like your muscle, your brain, etc., can absorb about five calories of glucose per minute if you're a healthy person. And if you're insulin resistant or type 2 diabetic, it'd be fewer calories per minute because your cells are resisting the action of insulin. And then the fructose half of the orange juice, banana, or cake, if that enters the liver faster than one to two calories per minute, then the liver can't keep up with the conversion of the glucose into fructose and generates triglyceride and cholesterol from it instead. So it's in some sense processed like alcohol which generates fats in the liver and then increases blood fat levels which then increases organ fat levels like atherosclerosis or uh, higher fat levels in the liver and kidney for example. And this is why Robert Lustig up at UCSF talks about uh, sugar being a toxin in his, uh, like in his paper, Sugar, the Bitter Truth. And this is true when fructose enters the liver faster than one to two calories uh, per minute. So you want to limit how much uh, fruit juice or faster digesting fruit, like mangoes and bananas, that you'd eat in any one sitting. It's fine to eat these things and to drink fruit juice as long as you limit the amount uh, at any one sitting. Of course, the same would be true of alcohol, which generates uh, high fat production, and that's what happens when high fructose consumption occurs at, at any one time. So here's a kind of a breakdown of how to think about carbohydrates. We have the starch sources, which are chains of glucose, and made up of uh, legumes, tubers, and cereals. And then we have vegetables, fruits, and uh, sugars, like sweets, so even though vegetables are very low in calories, the type of digestible calories is identical to fruits and table sugar, and that's sucrose, which is half glucose and half fructose. So if you had a piece of bread and a banana, each of which are 100 calories, you'd end up with 100 calories of glucose from the bread and 50 calories of glucose from the banana or from the 8-ounce glass of orange juice for a total 
of 150 calories of direct fuel for your brain muscles and the rest of your body and the other half of the vegetable fruit or sweet calories is fructose that goes to the liver for conversion into glucose and you've got about a five calorie per minute absorption rate uh, of glucose into your body before it spills over into fat and about a one to two calorie absorption rate of fructose in the liver before the liver converts it into fats.